did you know that there's something on Earth that's continental in size and over 900 miles high? Today, right now, what can it be? How could you not know about something that's that big and over 100 times taller than Mount Everest? Have you ever wondered what lies beneath your feet, deep down, inside the Earth? Today I'm going to take you on a 2,000 mile journey into the planet, though we can't go there. The Earth isn't what it used to be. That is the Earth in textbooks. Not long ago, most geology textbooks gave a very simple picture of Earth's interior. We walk around on the crust, that's where we live. It's the skinniest layer, the skin of the apple. And this nearly century-old static view of homogenous shells is what you can still find in textbooks. But about 50 years ago, there was a revolution in Earth sciences. It became clear that Earth's surface is broken into these massive sections called tectonic plates, and they are moving. This challenged the old view of bland, homogenous layers, which can't explain how or why these tectonic plates move. What has the capacity to move a tectonic plate? So powerful that movement along the San Andreas Fault will eventually make San Francisco and Los Angeles neighbors. <laughs> Clearly, there's something remarkable going on in the interior of our planet. But how do we know this? We can't see inside, and we can't go there. So how do you visualize what you can't see? If I wanted to study the human brain with non-invasive methods, there's a machine for it. And it gives me a picture of the tissue of the human brain. If I wanted to see the shape of a baby in a mother's womb, there's a technique for that as well. These methods, they rely on putting energy into the body and studying it when it comes back out. Sometimes the energy will echo off of something with different properties. Sometimes the energy will just slow down and take longer to get out of the medium than we expect, or it arrives diminished in strength. This imaging depends on the changes in the energy. But there's no device to put the Earth in, and we can't drill deeper than the skin of the planet. Well, my journey to the center of the Earth began in grad school. My professor, he would take out these seismograms. These are the paper recordings of the ground vibrating at different locations on the planet. He had piles of these things. Super excited, he would point to some specific wiggle. He's like, he would exclaim, like, look at this one. <laughs> he was actually giddy. <laughs> I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> but if he's this giddy, it must be something really cool. Eventually, I learned what the signals meant and that they are windows into the inner Earth. This was my own version of Star Trek, <laughs> right? To, to explore the inaccessible, to go where humans can't go, to explore the hidden, the unknown, so over about the past 20 years or so, our view of the inside of the planet has become increasingly clearer. The number of sensors that record the vibrating ground has steadily increased, enabling us to paint an even more detailed picture of the hidden interior. So this animation shows how the ground actually moved up and down in the United States from earthquakes in Baja, California. Each ball represents a sensor location. The vertical motion is exaggerated, but these waves actually happened. These thousands of super sensitive listening devices are our version of a really amazing telescope that looks down, deep down, into our planet. 
Vibrating waves carry information about their journey. In fact, every time there's a large earthquake, its wave energy travels through the entire planet, carrying information about the journey back with it to the surface. I mean, this is just amazing to me, even beautiful, that earthquakes vibrate every part of the planet's interior. Right here, right now, beneath your feet, the ground is vibrating from a distant or nearby earthquake because they happen every single day. With these abundance of seismic recorders, we now have a new view of the interior. Bigger than a continent, over 900 miles high, blobs. This is what we affectionately and scientifically refer to these structures as. These massive structures update our idea of the interior, the once bland, homogenous uh, mantle of the Earth. They're different from the mantle rock, and this is something we're still, still trying to understand. They are denser than the mantle because they're piled up along the bottom. So this is a new view we have of our planet, blobs. <laughs> now let's consider the convective motions inside the Earth. This is a computer simulation, and what it's showing is how the mantle rock, the solid mantle rock, the blue stuff, moves over millions of years like slow motion wind from the surface down to the core and back. And this fluid-like convection sweeps the dense blob material, the red stuff, on the bottom into these pile shapes that we see today. So the same convection that's forming the blobs is also beneath the tectonic plates. So everything on the interior is in movement together. But wait, there's more. This simulation predicts that there's plumes of hot material rising off the blobs and going to the surface. And in fact, on Earth, above the blobs, there are volcanoes, past and present, from small to massive. So higher resolution imaging gives us a clearer picture of the interior. The more sensors we have, and those are steadily increasing, the more we study these blobs, the more we see, including things other than the blobs. And that's good for me because there's more things to discover, <laughs> more things to uncover. Just as the Hubble telescope brought us amazing new images of distant stars and galaxies and cosmological phenomena, our ever-expanding seismic data sets are allowing us to sharpen the focus of structures in our planetary interior. And they're showing us that Earth's interior is as dynamic and changing and moving as phenomena at Earth's surface. So we now know that within the static homogeneous layers of the old model is a wonderful dance of material and motion, ups and downs, solids and melts, and most exciting of all is they represent many unsolved mysteries waiting to be discovered. Thank you.